So when you have a sequence in Python, whether it be a list or a string or whatever, you can access its elements using indexes. In today's video, I'm going to explain you how to use them. So indexes are basically numbers used to specify a position in the sequence. So the syntax to use is the following. So you've got sequence, which is the name of the variable to which you assigned, you know, the sequence, let's say a list, and then the index, which is the number. Okay. So let's say we have a list, my list, and you've got zero, one, two, three, something like that. Okay. And now we want to get the first element. And of course you, you might be thinking, you just need to write something like my list one, right? Wrong. Because the lists are zero indexed, which means that the first element is zero, the index zero, the second element is index one, third index two, and the last index is the three. Okay. Zero, one, two, three. All right. So you need to do something like zero. Okay. Of course, to see that we need to print it. Okay. So let's print it and you see that you get the zero which is this element here. Okay. So the first element is at index zero and the last element is at index length minus one, which means the length of the list in this case of the sequence minus one. So the length of the sequence is four minus one, three. So you've got the last index is the three and we can do that by doing something like print my list. Okay. Then len my list. Okay. So you get the length of the list minus one. And we are going to get the three, which is the last element, right? Perfect. So now we're getting the elements counting from the beginning of the sequence. So zero, one, two, three. But what about if you want to count from the end? Because sometimes you've got like, let's say 100 elements and you don't want to be like zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. You just want to get, let's say the last elements and you don't want to use the length every time. Okay. And luckily for us, you can use negative indexes. So if you start using negative index, like my list minus one, the minus one represents the last number. So you don't have zero, of course, because zero is the first one. So you've got minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Okay. And as you can see, we actually get the last number with the minus one as well, which is pretty cool because you get use minus one and you get the last element. Okay. So. Another cool thing about indexes is that you can, you can sort of chain them. Let's say you've got a sequence. Let's actually comment this out and let's actually comment this out as well. So you've got this list here, my list, and you've got a one and then another list inside. It could have been also a tuple. Okay. So as I said, you can chain the indexes. Let's say you wanted to get this first element of this string. Of course, the string is a sequence as well. So this is index zero, one, two, three, four, five, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. Okay, perfect. So let's say we wanted to get the first element of the string, the S, you would have to do something like my string. So get the string first like that. Okay. And then you would have to print the my string first element. And of course we would get the S. Okay. As you can see, you get the S, but what about if we change the two indexes? Okay. Instead of getting the, the string first and then get the element, we can do something like, let's actually print that straight away. My list one. So we are getting the string and then zero. Okay. So one zero. And this is the same as you can see S. Okay. So let's say you had like 10 lists. You could do something like one, zero, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Which is really, 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 really cool. Then so far we've just got the element from the list, but if you have a mutable object, like a list, you can use the index to replace the value of the element. But this of course wouldn't work for immutable objects like strings, etc. Okay. By the way, if you're still watching, I would really appreciate if you left a comment down below so that I know that you are enjoying the content. So. As I said, with mutable objects, like a list, you can assign a new value to a specific element. Okay. So let's say we wanted to change the first element of the list. We could do something like, let's actually keep the, the, the list. Let's comment this out. We could do something like my list then. Okay. We're getting this list, this list here, and then zero first element. And we're going to assign 
1000 to it. And then here, we're just going to print the list and see what we get. So as you can see now, here, you've got 1000, not one anymore. Okay, so you've changed it. Of course, as I said, you cannot do that with a string because the string is immutable. Okay, and of course, if you had just a list, you could replace this one. For example, you could do something like my list zero and then replace it with even another type of object like string two. Okay, and of course, we need to do to print it down here. And as you can see, you've got string two as the first element. Okay, so you can use indexes also to assign a new value to a specific point in the list. And minus one works as well, minus two, minus three, etc. And with mutable objects, you can also delete an element using the keyword del. Okay, so you can do something like del my list one. Okay, then if we print my list now, you'll see that you don't have the string here anymore. You just have two elements. Okay, so you've just deleted one element from the list using del and using the index of that object, specific object. Okay. So now that you've got a better understanding of indexes, go and watch this other video about Python that you see on the screen, and I'll see you there.